Last week, the Miami Dolphins acquired multi-time All-Pro and Pro Bowler Jalen Ramsey from the Los Angeles Rams in exchange for tight end Hunter Long and their third-round pick in the upcoming NFL Draft. Now, to give you an idea of the player Miami coughed up, in his two-year career in the 315, after being selected in the third round of the 2021 draft, Hunter Long had slightly more of an impact on the team's fortunes than I did. His numbers in that two-year tenure were 17 games played, zero starts, one reception for eight yards, and no touchdowns. So when I say slightly more of an impact, it's not hyperbole or exaggeration. The man, again, no lie, look it up, had double the amount of game day scratches and trips to the inactive list than he did receptions and yards combined. This is what Miami gave up in their third round pick, by the way, for a three-time All-Pro a, and a six-time Pro Bowler that the Rams in 2019 gave up two first-rounders and a fourth, then turned around and signed to a huge contract extension. A majority of you know this, but for those of you that don't follow the inner workings, draft pick signings, trades, etc., you're going to hear this, and you know if you just follow your team, you're going to say, all right, well, Ramsey must have really sucked in L.A., or you know he must have suffered a serious injury at one point and showed signs of major decline or there had to be a reason behind this because they got hosed he had to have played bad right nope ramsey more than lived up to what the rams paid him both in draft compensation and in the money so why is miami walking away with the mother of all bargains a tight end who was looking like a wasted draft pick wasn't going to do nothing next year. The Dolphins were talking about spending a draft pick on a tight end this year. So Long had no future there. A wasted pick, call it as it is. No disrespect to Hunter Long. And a third-round pick, big deal. They needed cornerback help anyway. So why did Miami get away with such a bargain? Tell you why. Crux of this video, and it's going to involve another team here, along with the Dolphins and the Rams. There are certain teams in the NFL, and the Rams are king of this example who when it comes to draft picks and really the future they will kick the can down the road they'll ignore the salary cap they'll rearrange chairs on the titanic they'll worry about the future when it gets there and as i said they will kick the can down the road and i know the fans love it the fans love winning the offseason super bowl making the big splashes I know in the Dolphins fan base over the last, you know, couple of years, the, the, the war cry has been, fuck those picks. Who gives a fuck about salary cap? It, it's, it's not real. It's fake. Couldn't be further from the truth. The Rams are a prime example of that. There's a reason they gave up Jalen Ramsey for next to nothing. Ramsey's still 28, guys. He's very much in the prime of his career yet. Ramsey could still play for another five or six years at this level. But the Rams kicked the can down the road. And you can only adjust the chairs on the Titanic for so long. Believe it or not, the salary cap is not this phantom boogeyman that, that people use as a scare tactic. Yeah, things can be rearranged. You know, contracts can be shifted and adjusted and salary cap bonuses and, and you know, signing bonuses, et cetera, et cetera. They could be altered and adjusted it is finagable if that is a word it is maneuverable but only to so much extreme that's why teams like tampa the saints now the rams are in dire straits they're not done they are not done moving they're trying to move matthew stafford now he's 75 million dollars in dead money if they move him so good luck there but the Rams have done it. They've thrown money around left and right. They've moved, you know, salary cap space around, and they've worked their magic. They have capologists to do this. It's sort of like, you know, taking out a, another credit card to pay off your, your loans. 
okay? When that cat credit card catches up to you, take out another credit card. Sooner or later, you're going to have to pay the piper. And that's what the Rams have done. Forget the first-round picks. They have treated first-round picks like a bunch of old collectibles that you have stuck in a storage unit that you have no plans on keeping that you stick on eBay with the you know, price tag listed or, or best offer very right next to it. The Rams, since moving back from St. Louis, have made exactly one first-round pick that they traded up for. That was Jared Goff, who, by the way, they in turn traded a few years later for Matthew Stafford along with more first-round picks. Now they're in this boat. And there becomes a point where you're going to be up Shit's Creek without, without a paddle. I know Dolphins fans are loving life right now. Oh, we just got Jalen Ramsey for a steal. We got Tyreek Hill for a last in market value and signed him to a, you know, a contract extension. Oh, my God, we're living life. You know, Taryn Armstead. I mean, be careful, man. This is exciting now. But what's going to happen three years from now? And we can't say, fuck those picks and we'll worry about it then. Ask the Rams how it is. Yeah, and the Rams, look, <laughs> they won a Super Bowl. They won a Super Bowl. They, they made it to another one. I'm sure they would rather not talk about that one, but they made two Super Bowl appearances. And if that's what Miami's end game is, cool. Listen, I've been a Dolphins fan for, you know, since 1982. Okay, I've, I've seen one Super Bowl that I was old enough to remember, okay, that I was actually old enough to watch and understand what was going on slightly. They got their ass kicked. Haven't made it close. They haven't made it back since. Haven't even come close since 1993. Okay, we're going on 30 freaking years since they even made an AFC Championship game. So, I get it. We want Super Bowls. We want win now. Doesn't always guarantee it. There's another team, the New York Jets. As a Dolphins fan, it, it pained me to say this last year. But I was very vocal. I absolutely was was complimentary of what the Jets were doing. I thought over the last few years, they've built a very nice young nucleus. They had to bite the bullet and make some very, very tough decisions. Trading Jamal Adams, he's, he was a beast in New York. It was a high first round pick. He was a stud. They had to chomp down on their mouthpiece when he wanted out. And they, they cleaned house. They cleaned house and did okay. They... Built themselves up, built themselves up, got some nice pieces there, and looked like they were ready. Now, from day one, I said, be careful about Zach Wilson. He's not that dude. Even when people were thumping their chest and saying, well, people's team should actually consider taking him. The Jaguars should consider taking him over Trevor Lawrence. I said that was horseshit then. I said, this guy ain't it, and he's, he's not. So now the Jets are back at square one. And they're talking about making a, at best, bold decision. Aaron Rodgers. Everything they've done this offseason, from hiring Nathaniel Hackett as our offensive coordinator, to going and signing Alan Lazard to be their number three receiver, it's all lining up for one thing, and that is hoping that Aaron Rodgers says yes, that I want to go to the Jets. Today, though, Green Bay threw a bombshell out there. Their asking price? Two first-round draft picks. Why the pause? Aaron Rodgers is 39 years old. Okay. Now, I know there's some cat who just walked away from the NFL by the name of Brady who played till he was 45. I know... 12 months ago, Aaron Rodgers was league MVP. Had one of the best seasons of his career. Father time's unbeaten, folks. Rodgers didn't look so hot this year. Not at all. And I know we could sit there and say, well, you took Devontae Adams away from him. Okay. He's 39 years old. Are the Jets really going to do this? Are they really going to cough up the 13th pick and a first rounder next year for a guy that may have a year or two left? And let's be honest, this guy has been questioning his future each of the last two seasons. 
How much more is he going to want to do this? How much more? How many more years is he going to? He could say next year, you know what? I had enough. I'm done. Then the Jets gagged up two first-round picks. Two players that could have gone towards their young nucleus where they're only a, really a, a, a quarterback away. I get it. But they coughed up two first-round picks that could have continued to build that young nucleus for something special for a guy that played a year. If you're going to give up two first-round picks, do it for Lamar Jackson. There's, there's a quarterback out there that's 26 years old that teams are avoiding like he has the bubonic plague. If you're giving up two first-rounders, that's what it's going to take for Lamar. I just throw it at Lamar. Not Aaron, not Aaron Rodgers. At least with Lamar, you know, yeah, he's, you know, we, we worry about his ability, you know, because he's a running quarterback. Yeah, he's missed time each of the last couple of years, but, you know, he doesn't have to run it the entire time. Brees Hall's a stud. He's got immediately walking in the door, will have a better wide receiver than he ever had in Baltimore, in, uh, in, in Garrett Wilson. And I'm not throwing in the towel on Eli uh, Elijah Moore either. Got a great running back, in my opinion. Potentially great. Again, if that's what you're going to do, you're doing it for the wrong guy. Go after the 26-year-old. Not the 39, almost 40-year-old. And believe me, the last thing I want is Lamar Jackson in the AFC East, okay? I do not want to see um, Brees Hall running the football at us one or two downs and Lamar running the football at us one or two downs and then throwing the rock to, to Moore... Or, or Wilson, or Lazard, or that's horrifying. That scares the shit out of me a hell of a lot more than Aaron Rodgers does. So here's where we are. Another team that looks like they're ready to at least cough up a couple pieces of their future for, for what? Win now? Is Aaron Rodgers the difference between the Jets making the Super Bowl and them not? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny is he a better quarterback than Zach Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. Do I trust his future more than I do Zach Wilson? Yeah, even if he plays another year and that's it. I still think he's a better – I'd like him better than Wilson. But there has to be better options out there. Even if it isn't Lamar Jackson, there has to be something else. If I'm them and Aaron Rodgers really wants to go to New York because that seems to be it, they're in command. Look, here's the deal, bro. We'll give you a second. That's it. We will give you a second rounder. That's all. Take it or leave it. Joe Douglas is a smart guy. In my opinion, that's the direction he's going to go. It's like, look, here's the deal. Here's what we're offering you. You can either take it or you can kick rocks. Anyway, that'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk soon.